Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' exciting book. <laughs> Deep in the forest fastness, Tarzan sits on the hollow mound of earth that is the dum-dum of the great ape. Majestically, he presides over the tribal meeting of his brothers, the apes. Before him comes Tana, whimpering. <laughs> Tana complains that Gunto, her mate, has bitten her on the side. You're on, Gunto. Guru Tana. Tarzan asks Gunto what he means by biting Tana. The great ape sidles slowly toward Tarzan. <laughs> Gunto complains that Tana is lazy. She will not bring him beetles, will not scratch his back. She's gone from the tribe for hours at a time. In short, she's not paying sufficient attention to the mate who protects her in times of trouble. Tarzan lectures them both on their duties toward one another. Tana must mend her ways, and Kunto must not bite Tana anymore, or else Tarzan will give him a taste of the gleaming knife the apes fear. <laughs> Kunto growls deep in his throat and ambles away. Tana whimpers and retires to the shade of a spreading tree. <laughs> Before the feet of justice shuffles Mungo, an old ape whose fighting days are past. Through toothless gums, he mumbles that Takla, the sullen, brooding ape who recently killed one of Bulgani's tribe, is missing from his haunts. Ludon Magor Bulgani? Tarzan questions the old fellow, but Mungo can give no further information. Malut Takla Wakambi Bulgani? Tarzan calls aloud to the tribe, asking for information of any who know of Takla's whereabouts. But none can tell him. Tarzan's brow wrinkles in meditation. Once before, Takla had run amok and left a trail of devastation in his wake. The apes are silent as they see their leader lost in thought. Quickly, Tarzan dismisses his thoughts and signals the next complainant to step forward. <laughs> While Tarzan presides at the apes' council, Jane Porter, her father, Clayton, and Philander discuss the ape man as they strengthen the defenses of their hut. I think this is the most extraordinary thing I ever saw or even heard of. It certainly is. The ejector jammed on my rifle just as I was ready to fire the second shot at the boar. Well, the brute charged. I caught my foot in the vine, and before the boar could get to me, this fellow, whoever he is, landed on the animal's back, and in 30 seconds it was dead. But the thing that puzzles me is... Why did he bring it here? I-, I felt like a fool trying to talk English when all the time I knew he didn't understand me. So I pointed to the ball, then opened my mouth and made pretense of eating. Well, sensible, I'd call it. Then what? Then he pointed in the direction of the hut, picked up the kill, and disappeared in the tree. I had been inside the hut doing... I don't remember what. And I went to the door to see if you were coming. Well, there I found the boar. And in about ten minutes you arrived. Did you see him? I can't be sure. I suspected, and I can't say why... That our jungle friend had brought it. I looked up into the trees, and for a moment I thought I saw a face. But an instant later it was gone, so I couldn't be sure. In all probability, it was him you saw. Evidently, while he doesn't mind helping us, he objects to being seen. That I think is natural. We've invented his retreat, and while he doesn't altogether like it, he tolerates it. Yes, Jane, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, by the way, where's your father? <laughs> Mr. Philander closed up the chinks in the hut, as you suggested. And then he and Daddy went off to fetch water. They ought to be back any minute now. Did they take rifles? They took a rifle. I suggested that one act as a lookout. I was afraid that if they both took rifles, they'd both get shot if that is possible. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 Good night, Philander. Uh, somewhere, I, I can't be sure where at the moment, I have read that when two people are, are carrying an object... If they will only break step, they will find the load easier to bear. Yes, yes, Professor. But in this instance, assuming for the sake of argument that a bucket of water is an object, I assure you that the difference in our respective statures would offset that benefit. Hello, Daddy. Settle is back with luck. We'll have roast boar for dinner. 
splendid, my dear. Phew, what is heavy. Uh, where should we put this this water? On that stand, the one in the corner. Settle made it last night after you were asleep. Uh, oh. <sighs> Wonderful. Wonderful to have the stamina of youth. My, my, that, that slight exertion in carrying the water from the spring has quite exhausted me. Most remarkable. Well, you sit down and rest. There's a dear. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I will sit down. Uh, oh, 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 look, oh, oh Daddy, 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 are you hurt? Professor, pride always goes before a fall. Mr. Philander, can't you assist Daddy? Preposterous, uh, Philander, you, you, you. I think perhaps I'd better assist Clayton. <laughs> well, if you will, Philander. I, I would like to get this fishnet completed and placed in the stream tonight. By all means, tell me what you wish done. Well, if you hold this straight while I weave the string through the net. Delighted. I'm sure I don't know what we would do without you, Cecil. Oh, don't mention it. Why, being comfortable, being fed, and being safe is as much my concern as anyone. Nevertheless, without you, things would not be so... so... well, I wouldn't feel so safe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, Philander... I've been thinking about... Uh... Oh, Daddy, we forgot to tell you. Cecil saw... Well, in spite of the fact that he doesn't speak English, I still feel that he is Tarzan of the Apes. Uh, you, you saw him again, Clayton? Yes. In fact, he killed and brought that boar to the hut. Extraordinary fellow. Did he talk this time? Yes, but I understood as little as before. However, this time I did make myself understood by sight. Yes, Daddy. If Cecil hadn't made himself understood, we would probably have had to go without our boar. <laughs> well, now our fish net is finished. I, I think I'll go and set it. Uh, we might have fish for breakfast. Oh, splendid, Cecil. Fresh fish is going to be just too delightful. Of course, we don't know that it will work as yet. Oh, I'm sure it will. Will we have speckled trout or, um, or smallmouth bass for breakfast? Well... I'm not so sure that I know just exactly what sort of fish there are in this part of the country. I'm sure that any kind of fish will be most acceptable. By the way, do you suppose we could do some fishing? Well, that's an idea. I I I'll have to fix up some sort of hook and line, and we'll try it one day. Well, I'm not at all sure, but I like the idea of you going off in that small boat. Oh, that's in the future, Jane. Well, cheerio. I'm off to place my net and set my trap. I'll see you later. Be back in time for dinner now. I will. Ah... Splendid fellow. Yes, indeed, Professor. Exemplary bearing. Due regard for his elders. Hallmark of breeding. Yes, he is. He lives up fully to all the traditions of the great uh, If I were a believer in predestination, I should indulge in innumerable speculations as to what chance led Clayton here to the hut, uh, built so many years ago by his uncle, Lord Greystone. Good heavens, Professor. Would you indulge in idle speculation in the very thing you deny? No, no, no. Uh, uh, but it's most difficult, Sir Philander, to be wise all the time, isn't it? Uh, just the same... Just the same, Daddy? Uh, just the same, my dear. Uh, one cannot help wondering... No, it's just possible that the safari that Cecil was on his way to join will pass this way. Uh, a slender hope, my child. I, I wouldn't dwell on it. No, I... Cecil said I should not think of it. He said I would go... Barney, I would believe was what he said. <laughs> Most extraordinary. The expressions these Englishmen <laughs> employ. Ah, yes, yes, Philander. Barney, yes, sir. Now, what etymological root or, or structure could possibly have led such a conception being based upon a word that is so very precise in its original meaning? Barney. Just the same. The word conveys what it is meant. And after all, that's the important thing. Uh, yes, yes, of course, Jane, of course. Now we need some fruit. You know, I think I'll pick some while Cecil is setting his net and trap. Perhaps your father and I had better go with you. I know you uh, don't have to go far, but still... Very well, then. Come along. Uh, uh, just a moment, my dear. Now, now, where did I put my helmet? Uh, where did I put my son helmet, eh? Now... Where, where, where did I put my my helmet? Did, did any of you see my helmet? <laughs> <laughs> why, it's on your head. <laughs> oh, oh, why, why, so it is. Come along, Daddy, and close the door. We don't want to find a lion in the house when we get back. As Jane Porter, her father, and Philander go in search of fruit, Turquoise, a bull ape, banished from the tribe by Tarzan, watches. 
For days, Turkazus wandered aimlessly, nursing his spite and looking for some weak thing upon which to vent his pent-up anger. Swinging from tree to tree, the man-like beast sees Jane Porter a few steps in advance of her father. Silently, the hairy brute moves out on a low-hanging limb. Noiselessly, he drops to the ground in front of Jane. With one sweeping movement of his hairy arm, Turkos gathers Jane to him and loops into the trees. <laughs> 